Jason, today's episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Budget Blinds! Wow. That was not as uh, enthusiastic as normal. Well, look, it's a rough week. And <laughs> we're all trapped in our rooms and our houses, so this is all the, that's, all the, that's all the Budget Blinds I can give. I'm sorry, folks. My, I'm, I apologize to the Stoddards in advance. <laughs> well, you know what? I am still excited. I'm still gung-ho. You want to know why? Why is that? Because I have a brief message from our benevolent Robot Shade Overlords. Woo! All hail. Hey, the showroom may be closed, but you can still talk to them about your signature series automated shades. Hit their website. Give them a call. They are ready for virtual consultations. They can still connect with you and figure out how to make your home the smart home it needs to be. So visit our friends at Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Tell them Jason Nick sent you. Hey, one more note. Don't forget, all of our episodes are brought to you by this message. Shop local, Jason. Get some takeout. There you go. Get some takeout. Call ahead. Buy some stuff. Go support a local business. Get those guys are out there. They're struggling just as much as everybody else. And and the little bit you do adds up and and can save a, a lot of effort, a lot of stress, and a lot of jobs. So get after it. Hey, and if you if you don't want to do takeout, you don't want to do carry out. You know what else you can do? Go buy some gift cards. Awesome. We we all have friends, we all have neighbors who manage, run, or work at some of these local businesses. So let's do what we can to help keep them going and support our friends. Tom, Jason, Nick, Saint. Hello again, and welcome to Lee Summit Town Hall, a weekly podcast about what you can do to make a difference. I am Jason Norbury, and as always, I am joined by a man who needs to keep in mind that if you podcast from your front porch. You still need to wear pants to do it. It's Nick Parker, the publisher of LinkedIn Don't. Summit. I'm just saying, man, look, I can't see your pants. The good people on the internet of the podcast here can't see your pants. But your neighbors, should they walk by, can definitely see your pants or the lack thereof. And I don't need any more of those texts. Thank you very much. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you know what? When you work from home... Yeah, like the rules Things go happen. out of the window. I haven't, right. like, in, unless I'm leaving the house, I haven't put on real shoes in, like, two weeks. It's it's rough. It's you know what's all weird? slippers all the time. I have to make myself believe I'm getting dressed. I, I shower. I, I, I put on clothes like I'm going to work. I put on shoes. It's the only way I can convince myself I'm still working. I try to do the same sort of thing, he says, while wearing a hoodie. Uh, but uh, I the shoes is just a can't. I gotta. I I can do the slippers, and I'm a happy camper with that. And that's my <laughs> that's my red there. I don't. So, I don't own house slippers. You don't? Oh uh, well, that's a thing that I've adopted over the years, and and I wear them more and more as I get older. I'm sure there'll be a point where I may just never take slippers off. Uh oh, old man. Yeah, it's coming. All right, Link to Lee Summit is the source for all the news you need about our very fine city. Uh, while you're all trapped inside it. Uh, and our unofficial sponsor today is, as you might guess, tacos. Today at lunch, I was faced with the choice. I was craving both burgers and tacos. And I made the right choice, Nick. I just want you to know, I made the right choice. I made tacos. I had some leftover. I had made some. You had uh, me worried. I smoked some lamb ribs over the weekend. Ooh. Oddly, there were leftovers, which is weird. But there you go. Um, I did that, and then there was some leftover uh, lamb meat. I stripped them from the bones. I fried it up and made a little bit of street taco action. It was, it was quite lovely. Ooh, lamb tacos. Yeah. I, I want some of that action. You know, we, probably, we should probably do a, uh, a little count. Since we asked every candidate that important question, what would they choose? We should, we should do a little count and make sure we, we tally up the true winners. We know who the true winner was. Well, that's true. That's so. true. Hey, uh, you know, shockingly, there is not a whole um, lot of news to talk about, Jason. No, really, we're going to talk about something. Well, one of the things we're going to talk about is literally two weeks old now. (laughs) It is. So the last city council meeting that they had, there was was an emergency ordinance at the very end, and I – it accomplished a few things that I think might have have slipped past some people just because not everyone is nerdy like us and pay attention to these weird little details. 
but I think there are some interesting things to note. And the first, Jason, is this. Did you know that we just created a position of first acting mayor? We did. And we also created a position of second acting mayor, which I'll, I'll, I'll spare you the uh, full detail there. It's just like the first acting mayor, but it's second. <laughs> and this is, so what we have done is we have extended the line of mayoral succession in case of emergency, because we already had the mayor and then we already had the position of mayor pro tem. Right. Which took and, over if the mayor is unavailable to serve in their mayoral duties. In that right. Time. And so now we are prepared at two more levels. What, what are they, Jason? Well, we have first acting mayor and second acting mayor. So it requires a couple of things. It either requires that a, well, it requires that either a state of emergency has been enacted um, pursuant to ordinances or that the city manager and the fire chief determine that an undeclared state of emergency exists where the mayor and the mayor pro tem are unavailable to perform the functions and duties of their positions due to absence, incapacitation, or disability. Then essentially, and I'm going to oversimplify this a little bit, uh, which I know is weird for a lawyer who likes to be pedantic about words. Uh, basically, the, the council member with the most continuous experience um, on the council at that point, which in this case mayor. would be council member Rob Benny. Right. He would be that uh, at this point. And if there's a tie, there's drawing of lots. And then uh, the second acting mayor runs down from there. Um, and and so on and so forth. So that just that um, hopefully and is unlikely to have any major impact on uh, our day to day operations unless something really awful happens. Um, and if we're sitting here in the middle of the COVID nineteen pandemic and and are not imagining that this is coming, I can't. That's that's a pretty rough. That's a steep hill to climb right there <laughs> right. to get to that level of emergency. Um, however, and then I think the second thing that they did in this, or one of the other things they did in this ordinance that they passed, and it was an emergency ordinance, so it was brought forth and only required uh, the one meeting uh, to prepare and approve all at once instead of the the usual path where it is is brought forth and then um, brought back a second week for a, another reading uh, was about uh, voting and how and on more precisely where people can vote from on the city council dais. So that's, that's the big one. And um, this, and the immediate effect of this is that the, the next city council meeting that they hold in April is going to be in a sen in, in essence, a virtual meeting that they are going the, the rules were changed so that they could attend through video conference and they could vote through video conference. Right. And so that's the, that's the big change. And this is broad because this is, um, does not, is not limited to emergencies. Um, this is something that will be ongoing going forward. So this is an interesting thing where, uh, well, you know, someone's out of town or what have you, they can, they can video conference in and, and participate in the meeting uh, pursuant to that. Which, which that one is a little bit odd to me. Yeah, it seems, I, I, I will say, uh, I think opinions can vary on whether that is a thing that is a good thing or a not good thing, but it's certainly a, a nod to technology that we have the capacity to do that going forward. Um, and if they're, you know, make that decision, but it seems the odd part to me is why are we making that change today as opposed to in the future? And so the second part, and the part that I think it's more applicable to state of emergency is in the, uh, the second part is there are emergency voting procedures that can be used in case of an emergency or a state of emergency. So not only can you do it by video conference, but also by some other electronic means, which I believe, and I'm going to look here, video conferencing, telephone, facsimile, internet, or any other voice or electronic means. And this is something that's allowed. Okay. I want to know what council members still have a fax machine. I don't know. That's I, Honestly, given the state of most politicians, uh, <laughs> they they may still they may still have a telegraph for all I know uh, as as things go. But and I don't know what the I, other electronic means. Obviously, allows for some other other stuff for the future. But this is this is something that's allowed under the Missouri Sunshine Law um, to do in in when you are protecting the health and welfare 
of the public. You know, in situations like where we are now, where members may not physically be able to be there, uh, they can still participate. And and so in an emergency, those those alternative voting measures are even broader than they would be otherwise. The other thing that I found interesting in all of this, Jason, was the fact that it did not pass unanimously. It actually, there was one dissenting vote that was council member Rob Binney. And, and, and I, had a, I had a chance to speak with council member Binney. And what he told me is he, he didn't like the public's access being restricted. And, and he also, he said he didn't feel like he had had or the rest of the council had had sufficient time to review it before making the vote. So those were, those were his reasons. He, he had mentioned a couple of other things as, as well. And I, I think a lot of it boiled, boiled down to, he just, he, he just felt like it was kind of, it came up a little too quickly. Right. And then obviously I think, I think, you know, I can't remember or even know of for that matter, the last time where we were in a, a situation where public gatherings were essentially against the rules, right? We're not right. supposed to have public gatherings. And, and so I don't think our charter or city rules or ordinances were set up for that. Um, I know there are other jurisdictions where a, a member of a board or a commission or a council can appear by a electronic means, tele, you know, usually a phone conference in or something of that nature. Uh, Lee Summit was never one of them. Uh, and, and so it's probably good to make the change or make the adjustments, especially in light of the, the next coming month or two or longer, uh, where we may not be able to, to have all of the council members present um, in, a, in a meeting, or it may be unsafe to have that many people present in a room for a period of time. Because if you think right, right now, right, if we're limiting meetings to 10 or fewer people, there are nine people on the dais, which means that you would be able to have one staff person in the room right. if you had the entire attendance. So it actually, in order to conduct business, you really almost need um, the a, a number, a, a significant number of the city council members to stay home um, and be and come in electronically. You know, I, I think I think all of these all of these make sense, and in light of 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 all that we're we're dealing with, which as you mentioned, are just. <laughs> unprecedented right none none of this were things that we thought of uh during during any of the the recent like charter reviews and all of that i i do however i think I, I, as a as a process guy as someone uh who has lived his life in in journalism with that little watchdog attitude i do like that there there was somebody who even though it was just one dissenter i do like there was somebody who was thinking about precedent that thought a little bit about what does this mean after this period of emergency so i I appreciate that dissenting vote. I do too. And I mean, and others may have thought about it as well and were happy with the, you know, what they perceived as the follow through consequences or not. I don't know. We, I mean, that without sitting down and watching what looked like about an hour of discussion um, from two weeks ago, uh, it's, it's hard to get through the, the entire gist of it, but I certainly understand why the, uh, why the concern was raised. And, and, and it's certainly something that probably needs to be revisited with some hindsight when we get through this process to make sure that we didn't over, we didn't, we didn't open the door too far um, or not far enough potentially um, once we, once we get through that thing, we'll just put that on the list of things to review that didn't work great when we, uh, when we were in the middle of the COVID crisis. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, let's stick with, uh, with, with some city news and um, but, but we're going to move kind of off council and talk a little bit about, the Lee Summit Parks and Recreation Department, they put out on Tuesday a notice that in addition to closing all of the playground equipment around, around town, they have now also effective immediately closed basketball, tennis, and pickleball courts throughout the city. This was a step they hadn't taken yet, but I think it was, it was kind of forced upon them as reports came in around the city of, of large groups gathering to, to, for, for pickup games and things on those courts. And this is just, this is just a, a safety move by the city to, to, to help kind of reiterate that need for people to stay home, to not gather, and, and, and to, to slow that curve, that growth. Right. I, how anybody thinks that you can play basketball and not uh, violate social distancing is beyond me. Um, but I'm going to say this. You can take my pickleball racket from my cold dead hands 
Hey, before we get to, to our, ne- our next segment, one last note, just stick with Link to Lee Summit and the Town Hall podcast for all the local information and updates from the city and the school system pertaining to any closures or changes in status. And with that, we're going to take a brief break from a sponsor, and then we will be back with, I don't believe I'm doing this, Jason, Matt Sanning is returning to the show. I can't believe you're handing him the lead in the clubhouse at this point. I I feel a little guilty about it. However, Matt had good reason. There's some things we need to ask of the people, and there's some things we can do to help people in our community. So we're going to take a little break, and then we'll be back with Matt Sanning. Hi, I'm Jane Monroe, owner of Embrace the Grape and District 4 resident. Donnie Funk has my vote for city council, and here's why. Donnie's time serving on the Planning Commission, his experience in the construction industry, and his work as a small business owner has given him the insight we need on City Council. This means that Donnie knows the questions to ask to get accountability for our tax dollars. Donnie Funk is a strong advocate for public safety and will work to ensure police and firefighters, along with all city employees, are well cared for. Join me in voting Funk for Four. We're here with Matt Sanning, the executive director of Lee Summit Social Services and the new, at least temporary, holder of the most appearances on the Town Hall podcast. Matt, welcome. I got you, Julie Cook. One of those, one of those announcements was, was good. What? Yeah. But, you know. We uh, like that he's the executive director of Lee Summit Social Services. That we very much do. That we Most do. people don't like that he's now the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, that's that's definitely Matt. Right. Welcome back to the show. You uh, you called me on Monday and you said, "Hey, I think maybe we ought to talk a little bit about some of our community that that's that is in, a little bit in need and then going to have more needs as we continue to push through our current COVID crisis." Can I call it? I always, I don't even know what to say, Jason. I, it's really hard for me to have a good set of things that is, uh, I, I'm going to say, podcast arable. Um, well, and, and more, I just don't want it to sound cliche. I feel like calling it, I don't know. I, it, global bleeping I, pandemic is really you're right. I, I just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, look, we're all we're we're all struggling, um, Jason. You know, we had a we had an episode recently where we we brought on Carrie Gray, a, a local therapist, to talk a little bit about dealing with, with stress and the anxieties that come with, with being told to stay in our houses and not go anywhere. And we've, you know, we've, we've reported news as things are closed down more, more and more across not only our city, but the state and the country. And then, uh, and then Matt, uh, I, I, I appreciate your call because I think it's a, it's a part of our community that we don't always talk about. And then, and maybe a, a hidden if that's too harsh part of our community and that and that that is that there there are people who don't have the means there are people who are poor and can't afford to go buy all of the loaves of bread or all of the rolls of toilet paper um from from the stores and so so matt let's start with this way paint me the picture what is actually happening now and people of need in our community what what does that look like okay so I'll, I'll just take you through um, uh, what we believe is going to, our community is going to experience. Um, when this was announced and the stay at home order, um, you know, was, uh, you know, given, what we saw was a number of people that were out of work. A number of our clients uh, work in the food service industry or the service industry in general. And so they're at a point now where at this moment in particular, they may have just received their last paycheck. And for folks living on um, a very tight budget, paycheck to paycheck, they weren't able to gather um, all the food that they would need for three months or a month. And in some cases, not even a week. And so we're dealing with the dynamics that are slightly different than the recession because we can't work, we may not have had the the money that we needed to stockpile everything, and we have a supply shortage at the grocery stores. And so we're seeing a a dynamic that's trickling down, trickling up, depending on how you look at it, uh, of need. Now, fortunately, Lee Summit has been a very resilient community, and so we haven't seen the full brunt of this this issue quite yet. Uh, And that might come in the following weeks. 
Uh, we hope that certain uh, remedies that are in place or that have been agreed to are going to slow that down. And so what I'm talking about in particular is, um, you know, a household of four uh, with no food or, you know, the, the lack of, of money to pay the utility bills, the rent or everything because of the not being able to work. Well, fortunately for Evergy and some of the other utility companies, they've said, we're not going to shut you off, but you still have to pay those bills come further down the road. So once you get back to work, you know, we're going to take care of that. But food is perishable. You're going to go through food. You need to eat. And so we're seeing a higher demand for that food. That higher demand for food right now, Lee Summit has absolutely responded in a, in a, in a, in a stellar way uh, over the last week, week and a half. We've had great support from the community as well, but we need to be able to project out four to six weeks. And that's where we start getting more concerned because everyone tends to pull back. And when people don't have the resources to help us, we don't have the resources to help others. And so those are, those are a few of the things that we're concerned about, but there are a lot of people that are always going to need our services. And we understand that that's a, that's a, that's a dynamic that we can, can predict and calculate. Like the recession, like every government furlough or government shutdown, there's an additional group of people that come onto our rosters for temporary help that we need to make sure that we anticipate. And we feel that this is very similar. So what you're, what you're getting at here is that so you guys are doing okay today. For what for at least some of social services, maybe some of the other organizations here in town. But what you're thinking about is May, June, July. Is 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 saying doing okay now? Is that a little bit of an overstatement? I think that the challenge is every nonprofit always needs resources and money. Okay, and and then that is that's just the way it is. The more money we have, the more resources we have, the more people we can help. Um, and so. To say that we're doing okay means that we are not going to come to the community today or this week and say that we're going to have to shut our doors because we don't have anything for the community. Being here since 1992, we know this community, we can predict certain things, and we're going we're gonna to stay at that door. We're going to welcome people in, um, socially dis distancing, of course. Um, but we're going to welcome people in until we have nothing in that building. What we hope is that we can project weeks out every single time and we can give the community a heads up on exactly what we're experiencing. There are other organizations in this community in Eastern Jackson County that are experiencing things differently. You know, some have projected a 30% increase and some have projected a 400% increase and we can't we're not, we're not prepared to say that that's the extent that we're going to go to. What we can say is that our projections to this point have been correct and that this community tends to be a little bit behind uh, as far as the reactions to, from the more, um, from the further you get out of Jackson County, the, 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 the further your projections uh, uh, kind of delay. And so, we believe that we're going to be hitting a wall at some point, and that's also why we have the ask now, um, because everyone's going to tighten their belts, everybody's going to experience things differently, and you know, everyone's going to feel it the way they do. Our businesses downtown are suffering right now. Uh, carryout is great, but I mean, there are people that are out of work. Those folks are going to dry up their savings and dry up anything that they have, and they're going to come into us for help. So. If I am a person who am, you know, moved to help <clears throat> and we're in a position that we can, what, what kind of, uh, what kind of process would be of most help to you and, and to the other non, I mean, not just to lease some of those services, but to everybody here, um, that you may have a, an urge to, to help support, what can we do? Is it better to give, I mean, it's always better to get a big giant check today and well, then another big giant check in a week, but I mean, it realistically, what, what are we, what are we looking at here? What, what's a way that. Because really what we want to deal with here is like we, we know the need is coming. We know that these things are happening. You guys have already been impacted and that you can't really open your uh, thrift store because you can't have people in there. Um, but, you know, we've had some you've had some help uh, offsetting some of that, at least in the short term. 
what do we what can a person do to uh to give or you know in a time frame i mean what can they do can they set up a monthly ask what 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 stuff really is of of use to you guys for for building those plans well so we've had incredible support from the community uh and we've had donations from five dollars to nineteen thousand dollars um, you know, First Baptist Church at Lee Summit just just had a, a great fundraiser for us. Good uh, on you, First Baptist Church. Yes, it, I mean, it really is is taking care of us. Um, you know, because right now with our thrift store being shut down, we're losing about ten thousand dollars for every month that the thrift store is shut down. And the thrift store income for those of you for those of you that don't know is meant every dollar of that goes to pay our client utility and rent dues, and so we make sure that they're in the home for another 30 days so that we can create other alternatives or keep them in that home and get them stabilized. So every dollar that we don't have uh, from that thrift store is going to hurt and, and affect a client in a different way. The other side of that is we don't know what other expenses are going to come up um, in that meantime, whether it be a hotel stay or other things, um, uh, car repair, things like that. And so all of that thrift store funding go somewhere very significant and to help clients directly. Um, so Jason, you asked the question of how can you help? Well, first and foremost, the other part of the disruption of the supply line at this time is that we can't actually go out and buy everything that we want to buy with certain grants that are specific to that. So milk, eggs, cheese, butter, you know, we have a great grant from the summit church that allowed us to go purchase those items, but when we walk into Hy-Vee and we have a cart full of eggs and butter and milk, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to go crazy. And so we're going to, you know, so whether we're, we're stifled in our purchase purchasing power, which we're, we're working on that, but we got to walk out the back door. We're not serving ourselves. We're serving lots of other people. And so if you go to the store and you pick up an extra can of of tomato sauce or an extra can of uh, cream of mushroom soup. We are great with green beans. Our green beans are stocked right now. Please no green beans, but I'll, I'll say that today. <laughs> but, 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 but green beans are about all that we're 100% stocked up on um, for probably six months. I mean, green beans are really popular. They must have had a great sale over the last six months. But, you know, the, the, the peanut butter and jelly, the canned meats, things like that, if you're going to buy one for yourself, buy another one for the agency and we'll either come pick it up, you can set it on the doorstep, or you can bring it in and we'll take it at the door. That's perfectly fine. Um, and, and I sound like a broken record, but what always helps is a cash donation because then we have the, the, the latitude to do whatever it is that we need to do. Um, we, don't, we don't embellish. We, we don't go crazy on our expenditures. We're very frugal. Uh, today, our staff had lunch. And we made an enchilada casserole, um, you know, because I was able to take home one of the few demanded items of enchilada sauce, and I had tortillas and ground beef at home. And so we made an enchilada ca enchilada casserole and served six people. That's like tacos, right? Um, yeah. Well, it tasted really good. I yeah, I, I think that falls under choosing tacos. It is it's like it's cool. like flat stacked stacked tacos. So it it, was, we'll it, we'll allow it. It's a Mexican lasagna. <laughs> and but, but we we serve we serve like seven people on on three dollars worth of food i mean it was it was it was fantastic it worked out great um and it was something that we hope to create menu items for folks that are maybe in a shortage and so we also experiment trying to make sure that we can we can help people uh stretch every every food item every dollar because that's that's our choice right now that's the only option it's it's what you do with what you have um my grandmother who started the agency i asked her one time i said what happens if you have one can left in that building uh whatever it is it doesn't matter she goes well everyone will get a spoon and we would spoon it out we would share because that's what we do and i don't know any different and so i say the same thing for right now i've I've always tried to be transparent with the community in everything that we do. I'm not going to be the, uh, the, the type of person that says the sky is falling. We are always going to look at the bright side of things. We're always going to work the problem. We are always going to try to be better um, tomorrow than we were today. 
And so if the community can help and they want to participate, that's totally up to them. And this community, I was very lucky because I grew up here and I know that's the way this community behaves. And so, you know, we just have to do the best we can. We'll get through this. I'm not worried about that. I worry that the, the downstream impacts are, are, are still coming and, and, and those, those effects are going to be felt. And I want to try to buffer that right now and help these folks while we can. Um, we will not shutter our doors. Those will not close. What we have to offer may be completely different, but we're going to keep those doors open as long as we have somebody standing. We've actually got two staff members that are working from home right now so that if any of us go down and we can't work, we get to bring in another crew. And, and, and that's that because that's how committed we are to making sure that the doors stay open um, because we know that people depend on us. So, yeah, you're done right. We're going to work our butts off. What are some other things you're doing to prepare since you see really the bigger needs coming, coming, coming down the road? What are some other things that you're, you're doing to prepare? Well, so we're, we're looking at um, where all the, all the hits are going to come for, for the families that we serve. Um, right now, and I'll tell you, um, our volunteers have not been present at the office right now. And so our food pantry is kind of a mess. A lot of sacks that are un uh, totally full that we need to get on the shelves. And so we've got staff that are, that are working to do that. Um, we're also trying to understand what the government's doing. We're trying to understand what the businesses are doing. Uh, I, I look at the EDC emails, the Chamber of Commerce emails, looking at what Jackson County is doing looking at what the state of Missouri is doing, and the Fed, trying to understand what some of those impacts are going to be on the families that we serve. Sure, right now I like hearing that the money's coming in. That means that folks can go to these essential grocery stores and get their food and get the things that they need right now. Uh, if supply lines are going to have a shortage, we need to anticipate that, and we need to know that our canned meat is going to become a premium, and we need to maybe reduce the number that go into each, each, each sack. Our utility and rental assistance, we need to understand um, that that is going to at some point um, be impacted by this, and, and it is. We've actually cut that off for now, knowing that nobody's gonna get shut off. Our thrift store is closed, but people are offering to make donations because, frankly, they're at home cleaning out closets and doing things like that. So how much can we go pick up right now and have it in our warehouse before it gets sorted because we don't have the volunteers to sort the stuff. So all of those things are a factor in our decision making. And right now it's staying on top of all the issues that we're experiencing and making a decision on how we're going to proceed. Just like the back to school store and the Christmas store, we're always thinking months ahead because that's the only way we can project. We have to look at what's happening in the community um, and People call us, churches call us, some folks in the city call us and say, what's going on? Let's take the temperature. And, um, you know, you know, frankly, when we look at the homeless, I think the homeless are, are an interesting example because their situation hasn't really changed, right? They still go about their daily life and they socially distance by nature in, in a lot of cases. And so we're not necessarily concerned about COVID uh, affecting the homeless, but those needs are always still there. So people walk up to the door, I need some bread for today. Fantastic. You got that taken care of. It's the folks that were uh, a dental hygienist that come into us. Hey, we're a two income household, we're dependent on this, and we don't know what to do right now. Those are the things that we're trying to anticipate, and those are the things that we're trying to work through, um, and, and those are the challenges. So I'm sorry. Well, let me let me no, let me ask you th this question: Are you able to to use anything that was learned back in 2008 during that recession? Are you able to use anything that was learned then for now? I mean, a totally different circumstances. I I, I understand that, but that is the only recent memory thing I can think of where we all of a sudden had an influx of people without jobs, without income. I mean, is there anything that we've learned? Very much so. Yeah, the first thing we've learned is don't panic. Um, the second thing we've learned is- I think I read that in a book somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, My favorite piece of legal advice, actually. The, the difference with the recession was the supply lines were not slowed or interrupted. And so when you, go, when you went to the grocery store during the recession, they had toilet paper. And 
you know, those kind of things. So there wasn't a, a panicked frenzy. It was those that had income and those that had dollars to spend could do so freely. And in this case, not only is that more of a concern in the very short term, but it's also a matter of, oh, I can't get within six feet of somebody or else I might contaminate my entire family. So everybody looks at somebody differently. A community like ours that was used to hugging, handshaking, the small town feel that we've now, you know, now we're avoiding each other. Now we're staying far away. And it does, doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's just we're staying away from each other because we know that they told us to stay six feet away. So we're doing that. But there's less intimacy in the community. And so don't panic, don't frenzy buy if you don't have to. And you know what? Still say hi. Today I went to Hy-Vee, um, stocked up on a few things. We needed butter because I bake bread and things like that and I like my butter. Two guys were stocking uh, the, the dairy aisle and I said, do you guys know how much you're appreciating? And they said, you know, thank you. That's simple as that. Hopefully it gave them something for that next 15 minutes to say somebody cares enough to thank me for doing my job in a time where maybe I could be at home or frankly, putting myself at risk. We, we didn't have to deal with that during the recession. The recession was completely different in, in, in that sense. Now we have to take care of each other in a different way. We have to care for the folks that are, are at higher risk. We have to care for the folks that, um, that, that don't have, and we have to be considerate when we take care of ourselves. And I think that those are, kind of, those are some of the things that I think is a little bit different than recession. But again, I go back to the point, don't panic. We need to just deal with what's at hand and, and do our best to take care of ourselves and our family. And then, you know what, let's take care of the community after that. Well, let's, let's, Let's move in then, Matt. I just want to, I, I, I always like to do this because our show is about how can you be involved? How can you help? So let's go to the next thing now. If you haven't asked for now, if you haven't asked for, hey, next month I'm going to have this need, what, what can you tell people? How can they be involved in making sure that your organization and other local organizations have what they need? I know you said, hey, if, you're, you, know, if you buy a can, buy a second one to give. But, but what are some things that you need now? Mm -hmm. And what are some things that you're saying, hey, think about us next month, we're going to need this. Is it, is it as simple as write us a check? Yep. Well, so first and foremost, don't be a doomsdayer on social media. <laughs> Lift people up. Make them feel better. Um, help people be optimistic during this time because it's tough for everybody. Everybody's cooped up inside of four walls. We need to do better for each other. Uh, we need to care for each other. And if we're not doing that, then it, nothing else really matters. Secondly, every nonprofit in this community is working their tails off. Whether they're doing it remotely or they're doing it in person, everybody's working to make sure that the needs are met. And, and, and I won't go through the litany of them, but if you have money that you're, that you're able to give, give and do so freely and, 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 and give to your churches. Your churches have, um, they're, they're, they're a great barometer for what's happening in the community. They are the barometer. Um, and I think they're, they're going to make sure that those dollars go where they're best used. And then lastly, um, next to last, next to last, uh, support local, okay? Whatever you do, no matter what, think of the folks that, that are serving your community. These global entities and all those things, they're fantastic. I, you know, we, we all patronize them, we all go, we shop, but think of the local communities that are so dependent on what this community offers them and think of how this is going to shake out at the end of the day. Neighbors Cafe, for example, has been doing yeoman's work making sure that I'm going to edit you and say neighborhood cafe. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I remember when it was Steven, it was Stevenson's Sue's okay, kitchen. So, <laughs> but, so it's been, we've, we've been through neighborhood cafe. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, my kids live for those cinnamon rolls and everything they do. Their staff is amazing. Don't Every we, day. don't we all, uh, we all do. We all have the waistlines to prove it. 
every year when we have the boot block and we get interviewed at 6 a.m., John Bedoin buys me a ch uh, hot chocolate from a uh, neighborhood cafe. It's the best part of that entire interview because it's 6 a.m. But support local. Take care of your folks. And then, again, Nick, what you said, if you go to the grocery store, buy one extra. Buy one extra and think of who you can give it to. I would love for you to give it to the agency, but if you want to give it to somebody else, a neighbor or another pantry or whatever, that's fine. Find a way to serve. Find a way to support your community. That's the way that we're going to get through this. And at the end of the day, we're going to say, we still maintain the values that this community developed over so many years. And wash your hands. And wash, oh, wash your hands. You know what? He had, the, he had the line of the show right there. Find a way to serve. Good job, Matt. Hey, real quick, if people want to reach out to Lee Summit Social Services, how can they do that? www.lssocialservices.com or 816-525-4357. And just in case you forget it and you want one last thing, if you want if you want to see how you can help Matt or you want to see how you reach out to one of the other other agencies, you can reach us on Facebook at Link to Lee Summit, on Twitter at LS Town Hall, or you can just email me, Nick, at link to Lee Summit.com. Matt, thanks again for, for coming on the show. I appreciate it as much as it pains me to say that you are now the most frequent guest on I got our you, show. <laughs> Matt, I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the work you do in our community. You are a, a good man. Good on you. And we will talk to everybody next time. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> good job, Matt. Matt. Awesome. Thanks, man. You have been listening to Lee Summit Town Hall, a link to Lee Summit podcast with hosts Nick Parker and Jason Norberry. A proud member of the Fredcast Network, you can subscribe to this podcast on most of your favorite podcast apps and catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all the news, analysis, and conversations on the Lee Summit community. Connect with us on Facebook at Link to Lee Summit or on Twitter at LS Town Hall. Mm -hmm.